majestic peaks, crystal clear lakes, and endless trails to explore. You just can't find a more beautiful place than Mammoth Lakes and the Eastern Sierra. But where are you going to stay when you come up here? Hotels can be pricey and campgrounds fill up fast. So come along with us as we show you an amazing boondocking spot tucked away in the heart of this stunning landscape. We'll share our favorite spots to hike, fish, and unwind, all while enjoying the freedom of boondocking in one of California's most picturesque destinations. Let's get going. We're super excited to be on our way to the Eastern Sierra again, and it's looking like some really nice weather's in store for us. But first, we have to ascend the Cajon Pass, and then there's a little desert we have to cross, the Mojave. We're gonna pull into the Arco station here in Victorville. They have the best price in these parts, and the further north we go, the more expensive gas is going to get. We love the enthusiasm folks show when they see our YouTube signs on the trailer. Driving north, we notice the water levels in Owens Lake are above normal. That's a good sign. Driving through these little towns on the 395 bring back so many memories, both with our kids and even when I was a kid with my family. We always top up with gas in Bishop even if we don't need it because the prices are so much more expensive up the hill. We take a ride on Benton Crossing Road a few miles after Crowley Lake and before you get into Mammoth. Staying left on Whitmore Tubbs Road, we see a number of small roads leading up to campsites. I walked up and scouted out the camping area on this one. I needed to check the road and make sure we could turn around. The road is narrow and rough, but we don't have to go too far, and there is a camp spot that will fit us perfectly. The site needs a bit of leveling, but it's not bad considering, and we absolutely love the fact that we have no neighbors at all. Let's show you around our campsite. As you can see, we've found a real gem tucked away here in Mammoth Lakes. It's a little off the beaten path, giving us the peace and quiet we crave, but still close enough to all the action. Now, normally we spend our time up in the higher elevations, surrounded by towering pine trees. And don't get us wrong, that's an amazing way to camp. But for this trip, we're trying something a bit different. We ventured down into the high desert, surrounded by sagebrush and volcanic rock formations to experience a whole new landscape. The weather forecast is looking perfect, with mild temperatures and plenty of sunshine. And one thing we sometimes miss when we're camping up in the trees are the gorgeous mountain views. Well, not this time. Just look at those majestic peaks. As you can see, our rig is tucked just off this little side road. It dead ends a bit further up at another spot, perfect for a van or smaller camper. While that spot might offer a bit more privacy, we're happy with our choice for the open views and extra space to spread out. Whitmore Tubbs Road can get surprisingly busy at times. We've seen everything from stock trailers to horse trailers hauling their precious cargo along this dusty road. They do kick up a bit of dust, but thankfully they're far enough away that it doesn't really bother us. We are very happy to call this home for the next week. This morning, we're headed up to Minaret Summit with Les, Paul, and Mike to explore a 4x4 trail. 
It promises incredible views and a thrilling adventure high in the mountains. While many know the Minaret Vista area for its spectacular views, few are aware of this hidden 4x4 road. It leads to even more breathtaking panoramas and lacks the crowds. Mike's leading the way in his forerunner, which has a slight advantage on the narrow sections of the trail. Les and the dogs are riding with him, while Paul's riding with Dang and I in our trusty rig. <laughs> this is where our retractable mirrors come in handy. Overall, the road isn't too challenging. There's only a few spots where four-wheel drive is really necessary. It's just a bit narrow in spots. Now this is where I'm glad we don't have one of those lifted trucks. We're essentially heading up the San Joaquin Ridge, starting at an elevation of about 9,300 feet. Paul says he feels like we're on a boat, and I have to agree with him. As we climb higher, the trees thin out. This area receives an average of 400 inches of snow each year and experiences brutal winter winds. There's a nice flat spot up ahead where we'll pull over and take in the scenery. And what a view! We have a spectacular vista of the Ritter Range, including Mount Banner, Mount Ritter, and the Minarets. Below us lies Agnew Meadows, the Middle Fork San Joaquin River, and the iconic Pacific Crest and John Muir Trails, all part of the Ansel Adams Wilderness. We actually visited the start of the Pacific Crest Trail in our Laguna Mountains video a few episodes back. Here we are 400 miles north and the trail still has a long ways to go before it reaches Canada. Our road winds between the Ansel Adams Wilderness to the west and the Owens River Headwaters Wilderness to the east. There's just a small sliver of Inyo National Forest between these two wilderness areas, just wide enough for this road. That flat grassy area below looks like it could offer some decent camping spots, but we didn't check it out. It might get quite windy down there, and of course you're not going to bring a rig up here. There's Mammoth Mountain right in front of us. It's summit towering at 11,053 feet. We're so high up that we're almost level with the peak. The road continues for another half mile or so towards Deadman Pass, but this is the perfect spot to pull over and enjoy the vistas.
Between the wildflowers, the massive mountains, the lakes, and the stunning cloud-speckled skies, this is what the Sierra Nevada is all about. The dogs loved it here too, almost too much. They were running off exploring, so they had to go back on their leashes. This turned out to be a fantastic, relatively short drive. It only took about 20 minutes to get here from the paved road. We're heading back toward town now to check out a few more things. We'll give you an aerial perspective of the drive back. encounter quite a few hikers on the road and their anxious dogs. I don't even notice I'm heading right for a three-foot wall. Yeah, let's stay to the right of that. Just a reminder that drones are not allowed in wilderness areas, which is one reason we chose this non-wilderness location. On our way back, we stop at one of the dog's favorite spots in Mammoth, Horseshoe Lake, and it has a lot more water than the last time we were here. Horseshoe Lake sits at an elevation over 9,000 feet, making it one of the highest lakes in the area that you can drive to. The dogs really appreciate the crystal clear water, right? It's a great place to let them tire themselves out so they can relax in the truck while we head over to one of our favorite restaurants. That's right, we're stopping at Burgers. This restaurant, though in a new building, has been serving up delicious burgers in Mammoth for over 50 years. I have fond memories of coming here with my family when I was young. The new building has a sports bar upstairs, so let's go check that out. Good thing we got here at an odd hour, they get pretty busy. And the burgers were just as good as I remember. There's nothing quite like waking up surrounded by mountain ranges as far as the eye can see. It rained a little bit, funny, just on us, not over there, and not enough to dampen our spirits, just enough to knock the dust down. We're headed up to Convict Lake today to continue a family tradition. If you've seen our previous videos from this area, you probably know what's coming. Convict Lake offers pontoon boat rentals, and they're big enough for the whole family. Even the dogs get to come along, and Paul's brother Dave is joining us too, so we have a full crew.
Rainbow trout are the most common catch here, but you might also find some browns. The wind's picked up a bit and it's a little chilly. As we relax on this pontoon boat and soak in the tranquility of Convict Lake, it's hard to imagine the dramatic events that unfolded here over a century ago. Back in 1871, a group of escaped convicts from Carson City, Nevada found temporary refuge in the rugged wilderness surrounding this very lake. A posse, including Robert Morrison and Mono Jim, pursued the convicts leading to a fierce shootout near the lake's outlet. Tragically, Morrison and Jim lost their lives in that gunfight. The remaining convicts were eventually captured and brought to justice, but the lake was forever marked by this dramatic event earning the name Convict Lake. The big mountain behind Convict Lake is named after Morrison. We've caught a few trout today, which is a good day for us. But the real highlight is simply being out here with loved ones in this beautiful setting. While this trip has been about spending time with the family, the next few days will focus on achieving a goal we missed out on during our last visit to the area. You'll have to watch our next video to see how that turns out. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. Your support helps us create more content like this. And we love hearing from you too, so leave us a comment below. We respond to every single one. Until next time, safe travels and happy camping. Thanks for watching.